doing? Hello. I always uh, get confused um, when I go live in this new way now because it'll say I'm live, but then it will also show a wheel, um, meaning it's still thinking, and then it shows liveness. So we'll, we'll see when I watch the replay. Let me know if you're joining me live or if you're watching the replay. Uh, it is Friday, December 11th, and uh, I, it is the end of 2020. It is the end. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> and all that is within me, praise His holy name. No, really. So um, I'm jumping in here just real quick. I'm not going to keep you as long as I normally would. Um, hopefully, I guess. Uh, I'm a little uh, late uh, with a meeting with one of my Life at Studios partners, Kathy. And so I need to be able to wrap this up pretty quickly. But I wanted to keep my promise to you. It's Friday, and that means uh, Faith for Life Fit talk, uh, Friday chat. And so today I wanted to kind of bounce, bounce off of, continue the conversation, whatever. But what's been on my heart today is really what does food freedom mean? You know, I kind of mentioned in my last chat, and um, I can. Honestly, I'll answer you, of course, from from my experience, standpoint, opinion, whatever you want to say, right? Food freedom can mean something different to you, um, but let's explore where I've been with it um, for the sake of conversation, and then I would love to hear back from you. I would love for you to be able to, you know, talk, have dialogue about this, not just uh, take what I say and, you know, just... Like I would like for you to apply it to your own practical uh, life, right? Your everyday living and eating and being. So what does food freedom mean? So uh, although this was not the first person that I ever heard the term from, food freedom, to me it was, it was a term that you know God gave me well before I saw someone else use it. But I did notice someone using it. Um, that's in the healthy eating diet, if you will, industry, and it's someone I'm sure I who. Whoops, my 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 watch thought that I was um, talking to her, I guess. So anyway, um, the uh, the author of the book and someone who developed like a diet for today. Um, her name is Melissa Hartwick, and she defines food freedom as. You know, meaning that food is fun again. That it means if you feel free, uh, you feel free to play around with how much, how often, and in what quantity you eat while still looking and feeling. Um, or she says it's about taking the morality out of food and recognizing you are not a good or bad person based on what's on your plate. Um, and that true food freedom means you never again feel powerless over food. That you, uh, food freedom is feeling in control of the food you eat instead of food controlling you. And, you know, I can kind of, I can really agree with a whole lot of what she has said in order to help bring a definition to food freedom. But, you know, even then, I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you have to say about this, right? So I went on a little journey through just a few scriptures, and I'm going to share that with you in case you're uh, a Jesus girl like me and you like to see things in the Word and then like give room for Holy Spirit to breathe and move over that Word and then reveal to you a new way of thinking, being, feeling uh, about what it is that you hear, right? So uh, I remember reading, I'm going to mention another book, and this one uh, oh goodness, I can't remember. I think it's called Full. Yeah, um, and it's about satisfaction and finding satisfaction in God instead of food, and uh, you know that concept of reaching for food to give us fullness instead of God, and you know food being something very temporal, temporary. We talked about that just a tiny bit in the the last time that I was here, but um, if you were to uh, one of those scriptures that she brought up in her book that always stuck out to me from the time that I saw it was uh, actually from, let me see, it's actually from, it. I had looked it up to make sure that I would be able to make sure that I was referencing it correctly, Second Peter 
uh, to 19. Um, so in the message version, 2 Peter 2.19 says, um, I'm going to go directly to like kind of like right where the 19 starts. Because you know how message Bible is like big paragraph or like three verses strung together. So it says, uh, men and women who have recent, recently escaped from a deviant life are most susceptible to their brand of seduction. They promise these newcomers freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For if they're addicted to corruption, and they are, they're enslaved. If I was to look at that same uh, scripture in the King James Version, give me just a moment, it says, uh, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Which basically means like you're a slave to whatever is your is, is your not able to overcome yourself. You know, that you're a slave to anything that you allow to have control over you. And in the legal sense, of course, you know, like uh, there, there can be a situation where, uh, well, I'm getting jumbled up with my words. Let me stay on task so I can end this thing on time like I promised. So while they promise them liberty, Okay, so they're promising something for you. Well, that, that to me sounds a whole lot like, sounded to me when I was reading this, sounded to me and resonated with me with that sense um, of, like, if I eat this, if I um, eat whatever I want, remember I called myself the cheesecake rebel, right? So if I just eat whatever I want, like, in my mind I was thinking, that's freedom, just to be able to eat whatever I want. The problem is there are always consequences to something, right? And it's actually a deception. I'm not really free, right? I mean, um, this, there's another scripture that I wanted uh, to bring up, but I'm not really free. I'm not free from the consequences of it. And actually, I'm not really free because that thing is compelled, like that food, I was feeling compelled, overcome, and enslaved to it. Like it... Uh, food, I was in a point in my life where food was uh, what I woke up thinking about. Like, when am I, like, I actually dreaded getting hungry because I knew that once I felt hunger, like, I would have no sense of control. And, you know, once I started eating, I felt no control over being able to stop or even of what my choices were. And... Um, I would just eat, overeat, binge eat, uncontrollably, or just sweet, 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 right? Um, you know, chasing that sugar rush. But also this, uh, so this script, this other scripture that I loved, I love, 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 I love this scripture because it's so good um, in, in getting to the heart of the matter. It says, everything is permissible for me. Yeah, that's freedom. Everything is permissible. But not all things are beneficial, and that's the realization that I that I had to come to in my food freedom journey, in my own personal journey, to finding my freedom from food, from allowing food to have such of a such a control over my mindset, um, my state of peace or anxiety, my uh, my everyday schedule, you know, because I would rearrange my day around what I could eat how much I would be able to eat, whether I was eating in secret um, and in private or if I would be eating in front of other people, like it consumed my thoughts. Um, I would actually kind of stress about, um, like I would never eat in public by myself because there was such shame and guilt associated with it. But I also would not just eat whatever I wanted in front of other people. Uh, because of the shame and guilt involved. <laughs> and I didn't want anybody judging me or anything. But um, I would eat what I thought was good, right, uh, for me to eat and permissible. But the truth of the matter is, is that everything is permissible. But not all those things were beneficial. So is there still room for having cake or candy? Absolutely. But there's a difference when that cake or candy is a compulsion um, when that cake or candy is 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 cr 
creating like a pull um, from on a soul level, you know, um, where I don't feel like I'm in control to say yes or no. Like it's a must happen instead. And uh, the rest of that scripture says everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. Uh, allowing it to control me. And I realized that food was controlling me. Food was controlling, uh, you know, the what I, what I ate, when I ate, how much I ate, or not. Um, and it can actually go to the other extreme. And I'll talk, probably talk about that in, in my next chat, in another chat, about when, you know, I, it got out of balance in the other way. Right now I want to kind of just focus on this right here. So... Um, there's, there was another scripture that, uh, let's see, which, which one was it? Oh, I lost it. Oh, no. I jotted it down quickly, and now I've lost it. Okay, so let's go to a couple of definitions real quick. So we brought up the word, and one of the first scriptures I brought up, the second Peter, the word corruption was brought up. And this was interesting to me. Um... Because if you think about the word corruption, a lot of us think political corruption, um, money, wealth corruption. You know, we don't really uh, think of corruption uh, in the sense of food or appetite or eating habits. But if you look at the actual definition of the word corruption, it just says dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. It's typically, and it says typically involving bribery. Well, okay, let's apply that to food. Because, remember I said it's not real freedom. I'm, everything's permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Well, the lie of that I was believing um, that had been, you know, that you hear a lot of women actually talk about it today, some of the anti-diet people or whatever, and I'm not a diet person. Um, that's another thing that I could say that I've found freedom from and into uh, another level of living where whenever I found my food freedom, you know, it was an undieting uh, kind of mentality for me that I was able to start operating in. But it was dishonest. There, there was a, there was a dishonest, a fraudulent uh, conduct involved because, um, you know, I hear people say, well, just eat what you want. Who cares if you have five pieces of cake or just one? Well, because the the lie is that I'll be just fine even if I adopt keep that as a lifestyle of eat, of eating whatever I want whenever I want because eventually it actually will restrict me in in my very health and other areas of life. It will steal, kill, and destroy me. That's what the enemy is, of our souls have come to do, right? According to John ten ten. Um, He's come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come to give us life abundantly. Well, how am I going to get life abundantly if I am enslaved to food and it is determining uh, the way that I eat and my habits around eating versus me being controlled of it? And what? How am I? How is I? But how am I supposed to live life abundantly if the habits that I have formed around my compulsions and eating have actually started to rob? me of my of health in my body to be able to have a long live a uh, long lasting life or a, even let's just let's go even more short term let's go uh, uh, foods that actually create disease um, and unhealth in my body but also uh, rob not just shortening my lifespan but the quality of life while I'm here you know so um, heart disease diabetes, you know, all these things that start to come about that can be linked to our eating habits, not just our choice of food, but also the timing of it. We can start having digestive and gut issues like I was having, right? So the the other thing is the process by, the other part of the definition of corrosion was the process by which something typically a word or expression is changed from its original use or meaning to one that is regarded as erroneous or debased. And so changing something, typically a word or expression that's changed from its original 
use or meaning. And that just reminded me of that phrase of like, be free to, you know, eat whatever you want. Okay, great, but what am I staying enslaved to that I'm not really free? Like it's, that's corruption, that's dishonest, that's fraudulent, that's twisting uh, the meaning of something. And so what is the definition of, that's another word that came from that scripture, was slave. Well, what's the definition of being a slave? Yes, we know uh, a person legally owned by another and having no freedom of action or right to property, or a person who is forced to work for another against his will, but what about, or a person under domination of another person, but what about a habit or influence? That is also a type of slavery, right? That when we are not free in our choosing, the 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 that that word over overcome, you know, uh, or overwhelmed, or compulsed, compulsive eating where we feel like, I can't say no. Is it the truth that we can't say no? No, it's not the truth. We can, but there has grown such a strong attachment that we sense that the freedom has been taken away or restricted or withheld, right? Um, and if we are, when the Bible kind of refers to it as, a, this is what I saw, that we are living in servitude to another, to a master. And there cannot be two masters. There can only be one or the other. And if we are people of faith, if we are people, if we are saying that we're Christian, and I was saying, hey God, you know, you're number one in my life, and he was like, okay, really? Um, well, then we need to deal with this. Because food has become a higher priority, and you're like, well, that sounds harsh. Well, if you think about it, and this can kind of be like a little mini self-assessment. Ask yourself, because it's not everybody, but it was something that I recognized in my life. When something went wrong, when I had a hard day, when I felt like life was out of control, uh, when I felt like something was really, really wrong, when I felt just hopeless or um, stressed out, I found myself in a pantry. I found myself rummaging through a fridge. I found myself going to my secret stash of chocolate. Instead of, and I know it sounds cliche, but hitting my knees. Instead of leaning into the Spirit of God. Instead of fixing my eyes on Jesus. And so, just to help us close this out for today, and then of course we'll continue talking about it. Um, I just had to realize, I, I came face to face with the realization that I was seeking, I was running to food as the solution and my source, but also the thing that would have control, follow me here, over my peace of mind, as if that was the truth. I was running to food for my own sense of peace and calm. But that's a lie. That's a corruption of the truth. The truth is that Jesus is my Prince of Peace. He is my source for every good thing. And in Him, it is well with my soul. You get me? So, that's all I'm going to share with you guys today. Um, let me pray over you, and I hope that this is helpful to you. Father, just thank you so much for every way that you have promised to deliver us out of and into a life of abundance right here, right now. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to realize your peace, your truth, so that we can truly be set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. You guys have a wonderful day. I got to go. Bye.